The aroma of the food brought him out of his room. Since his parents' demise in a car crash, Juliet had always been on his side. Looking back at things, he was grateful to have met Juliet, his girlfriend who for the past three months had always been there for him. She did everything she could to take good care of him after the demise of his parents. You are awake, Juliet said as he walked towards her in the kitchen. What have you cooked? James asked. Well, it's Joloff Rice, your favorite, she replied. When he first wanted Juliet to be his girlfriend, his friends advised him against it because they thought she was a gold digger. Now it seems he made the right decision. All of his so-called friends left him after his aunt took over his parents' properties after their demise, leaving him with nothing. Juliet, I think I should move on now, James said. Well, I'm pleased about your decision, Juliet. Can you please help me put away my parents' belongings? Having them around keeps reminding me of their painful death. Of course, I would love to help, she replied. Juliet, thank you for being there for me a while. I'm very grateful. I believe if Mom and Dad were to be here, they would want the best for me just like you, James thought. Juliet was clearing up some files from his mum's desk when a letter tied with a red string fell from the file she was holding, catching his attention. He then untied the letter to check out its contents. A ransom note, he exclaimed with a surprised look as they began to read the contents. I have your son in my custody. Bring a ransom of about 100,000 US dollars if you want him alive. The letter ended with the phone contact attached. The letter's content sent him into a daze because he was never kidnapped, but the ransom note was clearly about him. When did it happen and how come he doesn't remember it? I need to investigate this, he thought to himself. He must find out who was behind this before it was too late. But the question was, where should he start this investigation from? After a while, he decided to check out the phone number attached to the ransom note for some clues. Going for his mom's phone, he quickly unlocked it because it suddenly occurred to him that his mom might have contacted his so-called kidnapper. The only person capable of doing this would be someone he knows and is safe around, who he might have been with without realizing that a ransom note was sent. Who could it have been then? He saw a series of odd numbers and called his mom when the accident occurred. Among them was the contact on the ransom note. This only made his suspicions grow. Could it be that his fake kidnapping and his parents' accident were related, or was he overthinking? There is only one way to find out. Early the next day, he called the communication center to inquire about the details of the strange calls his mom made before their accident. The revelation shocked him. The recorded calls were between his mom and his so-called kidnapper precisely the day before they had the accident. Where he was on the day of the accident, then? The key to all this lies there. Another thing that baffled him was the main motive of the so-called kidnapper. Was it just for the ransom, to murder his parents, or what if he wanted to kill two birds with one stone? He was left in a dilemma. First, he must figure out the one behind the kidnappings that he doesn't know about. The thought that his parents died trying to save him brought back hurtful memories. Who is the perpetrator behind his kidnappings, and what was his real motive? He must begin his investigation from where he was when the accident occurred. On the day and time of the accident, he was actually at his Auntie Arabella's place, making her the most suspicious one. So he decided to begin his investigations from there. Was his dad driving carelessly to save him, or his so-called kidnapper wanted more than just a ransom? The next day, he went to the exact spot where the accident occurred to find some clues. It had been a while since the accident happened, so everything was cleared off, leaving nothing behind. He was about to leave when he saw a CCTV camera attached to a building at the place of the accident. After he narrated his story to Mr. Roger, the house owner, the CCTV camera attached, he was allowed to access it. As he watched the video, he realized that a man was placing a kid in the middle of the road as his parents' car approached, forcing his dad to veer off the road and crash into a fuel truck by the side of the road, setting the car into flames with his parents in it. Wondering whose kid was used as bait to have caused the accident, he decided to zoom that portion. Upon zooming in on the video, he realized that it wasn't a child but a dummy placed in the middle of the road to confuse his dad. He was short of words after watching the video. Who could be this wicked? It then occurred to him that the perpetrator behind his kidnappings must be linked to the planned accident. Only the person who decided on the ransom exchange site knows the route they will use. Now that everything was pointing back at the ransom note and the kidnapper, he decided to pay the most suspicious person on his list to visit, Aunt Arabella. Just then, his phone rang. It was Arabella, his aunt. Speak of the devil, he said to himself as he answered the call. Meet me at the office at 2 p.m. today, she said and ended the call. Well, let's see what she is up to this time around, James said to himself. Arriving at the office, he was filled with emotions as every single part reminded him of his parents while they were still alive. Mom, Dad, I will surely bring you the justice you deserve so you can rest in peace, he told himself. 
Have a sit, his aunt Arabella said as he entered the office, which used to belong to his father. I only want you to sign a document for me and nothing else. What kind of document can that be, if I may ask, James said. You only need to sign what it is about. I don't think you need to know that much. Trying to suppress the anger welling up within him, he said a quick no and left the office. What could be the letter's content, and why does she want him to sign it? Only his girlfriend, Juliet, can help him find the letter's content that his aunt seemed so restless for him to sign. Juliet had been the company's secretary for the past two years. Luckily enough, his aunt is not aware of the close interaction between him and Juliet. Just as Juliet took pictures of the document, Miss Arabella entered. Luckily, she was done putting it away. The document contained his parents' will, which was requested that all properties be transferred to James after their death, and there's another document attached. It was a property transfer, so everything makes sense now. Luckily, he did not sign the paper in the afternoon, or he would have committed the most irreversible mistake. It looks like his aunt is becoming increasingly restless, so he needs to quicken the pace of his investigation to expose his aunt's evil deeds before it's too late. The following day, he was walking when he got kidnapped by some unknown men. He was sent to a small room where a woman was waiting for him. Will you sign now, or do you want to end up like your parents? Miss Arabella said with a devilish look on her face. James was left to choose between staying alive or giving up on his family properties. But then he realized that dying meant he couldn't avenge the death of his parents, so he signed. The following day, he was summoned by his aunt to the company again, making him wonder what it was about this time. On arriving, he met their family lawyer, Mr. Benson, waiting for him at the office. After sitting of the chair reserved for him, Mr. Benson began his plan. James, according to your parents' will, you are supposed to be the next owner of all their properties. Here is the choice they left behind, Mr. Benson said as he handed over the documents to James. Hold on, Miss Arabella said. He had lost the ownership rights as she bought out the transfer documents that she forced James to sign. Are you sure about this, Miss Arabella? Mr. Benson asked. Well, I am very confident, and he signed it. She was checking the transfer documents. Mr. Benson admitted that James had signed them. Mr. James, I'm very sorry there's nothing I can do. At this moment, state the rightful owner of the property shall be given to... Hold on, a female voice was heard saying. To their surprise, it was Juliet. James asked, what you are doing here? But then she ignored his question with a smile and continued. Miss Arabella, you thought you were smart all along, but little did you know that you left flaws in everything you did. You were starting from the fake ransom note to the transfer documents. Her words left Miss Arabella astonished. However, unfortunately for you, I was a step ahead. When you sent that fake ransom note, I accidentally overheard James' parents to talk about it. Because James was my boyfriend, I decided to use my way to save him. However, it was all part of your plan to get his parents killed. But then, I could connect the dots after James told me he was at your place when the accident occurred. It then occurred to me that you knew something about the ransom and faked a dummy accident. From then on, I started investigating you. Sadly, on your part, you failed to realize that I wasn't the stupid girl that you could order around. I only wanted a chance to get close to you to enable me to access the hidden will and transfer documents. I knew you would like him to sign to make you become the legal owner of his parents' properties. I want to step ahead of you because I managed to swap the document before you can make him sign them. What you currently have is a fake document with his signature. I know you would stop at nothing to get your hands on the properties. All this while, I was in contact with Mr. Benson, and he is aware that the documents with you are fake. This can't be, Miss Arabella was heard saying. To make my plans foolproof, I deliberately let James have access to the ransom note and investigate on his own so that you can make him sign the fake papers. You, however, fell for our tricks and fully exposed yourself. Miss Arabella, all the evidence and witnesses here, what else do you have to say? Mr. Benson said. But then she could not agree that she had been defeated after all her careful plans. The police were called and Miss Arabella and her accomplices were arrested and sent to prison. James was very grateful that Juliet was able to save the day, and it even increased the bond between them. He then became the manager of his parents' company and grew his family business globally. James and Juliet got married a year later and lived happily ever after.